Welcome to your Algebra 2 Lesson 8.3. Today, you're going to learn how to graph general rational functions. You learned how to graph simple ones last time, and now we're going to generalize. And the method we're going to use is called RADI. RADI is an organizing tool for graphing rational functions and an acronym for the following. Please note that the numerator and denominator should be completely factored if possible. R is for roots. And for this, you're going to set the top equal to zero um, and solve. So you're going to solve the top. And then you're going to graph on the x-axis. You're going to plot those roots. Remember, roots are the same thing as the zeros or the real x-intercepts. So for instance, here in this um, function, we can see that there is a root right here, that little point right there. And so we would find that value and we would plot it. A is for asymptotes, and in particular here we mean vertical asymptotes. You're going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. In other words, you're going to solve the bottom. So we solve the top, then we solve the bottom. We're going to graph those on the x, on the x axis. They run <clears throat> parallel to the y axis. You, you find the value for x on the x axis and you dot in or dash in a vertical line through that point. T is for two, it's what the little two is for there, to so make you think of two T's, and it means two things. Do any of the roots and asymptotes have an exponent of two or multiple of, such as x minus one squared or x minus one to the fourth? Four is two times two, so it's a multiple of two. If you find a squared factor in the numerator, then T is tangency at the root. Tangency at the root means that the curve looks like a little parabola there. In other words, the curve is going to approach the root in two directions. And we've talked about that before. But that, that's where it's tangency at the root. Please note that it can either be upward facing, like we've got right here, or it could be opening downward. If you have your squared or, or uh, raised to the fourth power uh, factor in the denominator, T is for togetherness at the asymptote. So you've got a vertical asymptote. What that would mean is that you're, you have your function, and if one side is approaching it going up, the other side is going to come away from it going down. So they will both be going up as they approach the asymptote, or they could both be going down as they approach the asymptote. They're going to be going together on either side of the asymptote. When we don't have a squared um term in the denominator, what you're going to see is that there is not togetherness at the asymptote. For instance, in this picture, you've got one part, this branch of a hyperbola goes down here. It goes toward negative infinity as it gets close to the um, asymptote. The other branch here, the, the branch that's further to the right, as we move closer and closer to the asymptote, it approaches positive infinity in the y direction. So they, they aren't together, they're separate. But here you can see the togetherness. So t is for two and it means two things. Tangency at the root if it's in the numerator. Togetherness about the asymptotes if it's in the denominator. And that makes sense that if you have the, the squared on top, that means you've got tangency at the root because the top is all about the roots. If you had the squared on the bottom, it's about togetherness at the asymptotes because the whole bottom is about the asymptotes. E in our little rady is for end behavior. Um, for this, you're going to simplify the left terms to let you know what to do next. You're going to find the limit or behavior at positive and negative infinity. So you can have a horizontal asymptote, um, as we see in this first case here, you've got a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 0. You could be at another uh, value for y. Here we've got y equals 3. That's a horizontal asymptote. Or you could have what's called a slant asymptote. And we're going to actually look at all three of those cases. Y is for the y-intercept. Remember, for y-intercept, you let x equal 0. Well, when you do that, you're going to end up with just your rightmost terms. So if you look at the ratio of the constant terms, then you will be good to go. And you're going to graph that on the y-axis. You're going to plot that point. So right here, we have a y-intercept in this example at 
the point 0, 1. All right, let's look at our first example. We're going to graph y equals 6 over x squared plus 1, and you're told to analyze. Anytime you're told to analyze, that means use rating. Can we factor the numerator and the denominator? No, we can't. The numerator is just 6. The denominator is x squared plus 1, which is the sum of two squares, which isn't anything special. Remember, sum of two squares is prime. Difference of two squares you can factor. All right, so there's our rating. R is for roots, and so we, we try to solve the equation we, we get when we take the numerator and we set it equal to 0. Well, the only thing in our numerator is 6. We get 6 equals 0. There's nothing to solve, so there's no roots. Okay, so then we do x squared plus 1 equals 0. That gives us x squared equals negative 1. If we try to take the square root of that, we're going to get something imaginary, so there's no vertical asymptotes. So no roots, no vertical asymptotes. There's no square factor in the numerator, so no tangency at the roots. There's no square factor in the denominator, so no togetherness at asymptotes. We want to look at the end behavior. For the end behavior, we look at the, the ratio of the first two terms, the leading terms. So we have y equals 6 over x squared. Now what we have to think about is what happens when x gets very large in either the positive or negative direction. Since we're squaring, we get the same value. So let's say we plug in 10. We get 6 over 10 squared, so that would be 6 one hundredths. And so that would just be um, 0 0.06. If we let x get even bigger, we're going to have 6 out of a huge number. So it's going to get closer and closer to 0. So we say that this value, 6 divided by x squared, goes to zero. And that's going to be true anytime we have what we call a bottom heavy function. That's a function where the degree in the denominator, in this case two, is bigger than the degree of the numerator, which is zero, because we don't even have an x term. Whenever you have a bottom heavy function, your horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals zero. So you're going to draw a dashed horizontal line at y equals zero. So if you want to go ahead and put that on your, your graph, you can. We're going to look at the graph in just a second. The last thing is y. That's our y-intercept, so we let x equals 0, so that gives us y equals 6 over 0 squared plus 1. So 6 over 1 is 6, which is just the ratio of our constant terms. So 0, 6 is the y-intercept, so go ahead and plot that. Okay, so we know that 0, 6 is one point. We're going to make a table of values so that we can graph better. At this point, you should have the dashed line at y equals 0, and you should have 0, 6 plotted. All right, you want to pick some values to the left and then some values to the right of 0, since that's the one thing we know is 0, 6. So um, I went ahead and did let x equals negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. I plugged those values in, so I got 6 over 9 plus 1, because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Plus 1 is 10. 6 divided by 10 is 0. 0.6. I got the other values in the same way. And then I plotted my points. And so I draw in my graph, and I, I use what I know about asymptotes. I know that the um, function is going to approach that horizontal asymptote as we move toward the ends without crossing it. So I draw that in. And I know on the right-hand side, I need to draw a smooth curve that goes through the, the values I got when I created my table and then approaches that horizontal asymptote. So those asymptotes are still providing you guidelines, and so it's really important that you pay attention to them. Let's look at example two. We only have three examples today, so we should be able to make it through this in one video. We're going to graph y equals 2x squared divided by x squared minus 9. Now, remember before we had a, a bottom-heavy uh, rational function because it had a larger degree on the bottom? See how this one, you have x squared and x squared? This one's balanced, okay? So we're going to see how, how a balanced one where m equals n uh, function works. We're going to analyze, so that means use ready. Now, before we even start ready, we factor if we can. So we can factor this denominator because it is a difference of two squares. We've got dots. Okay, remember, sots, sum of two squares means nothing. Dots, and remember the other two, docs and socks. Difference of cubes, sum of cubes. 
Those are all things we want to look for. Okay, so we leave the numerator as it is, 2x squared. The denominator, we factor it out. We write it in its factored form. 9 is equal to 3 squared, so x squared minus 9 factors to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now we're ready to do rating. All right, R is for roots, and so we start at the top. We go top, bottom, left, right. So at the top, we've got 2x squared equals 0. We divide by 2 to get x squared equals 0. Take the square root. We get x equals plus or minus square root of 0, which just gives us x equals 0. And so um, if x equals 0 for a root, that means that we have a root at 0, 0. So you're going to plot that. So go to your origin there and plot that point. Now we want to take each factor in our denominator and set them equal to 0. So x minus 3 gives us x equals 3. x plus 3 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 3. So you're going to draw in both vertical asymptotes as dashed lines, one at x equals negative 3, one at x equals positive 3. All right. Remember, t is for 2, and it means two things. If you have a squared factor on top, that means you're going to have tangency at your root. The x squared factor in the numerator tells us that there will be tangency at the root. So that means that it's either going to look like a little upward opening parabola or a little downward opening parabola just at that, that place, just in that little area. Now, we don't have a squared factor. Yes, we started off with the squared term, but x squared minus 9, that's not factored form, so we don't want to look at that right now, okay? If we look here, we've got x minus 3 times x plus 3. Neither one of those are squared, so there's no togetherness at the asymptotes. E is for end behavior, and you look at the, the ratio of the leftmost terms in the original form. Okay, on this, you go back to the original. So we have y equals 2x squared divided by x squared. Your x squareds cancel, so it simplifies to y equal 2, and that's going to give us our end behavior. Probably the easiest case. Okay, so you're going to draw in a dashed line at y equals 2, and that's our horizontal asymptote. Finally, we're going to let x equals 0 so we can find our y-intercept. So when you plug in 0 on top, you get 2 times 0 squared, which is just 0. And the denominator, 0 squared minus 9 is negative 9. 0 divided by negative 9 is 0. And so the y-intercept is 0, 0. You've got to plot it. You realize, oh, it's the same thing as the x-intercept. That's what happens when you have uh, your x-intercept at the origin. Your y-intercept is going to be at the origin, too. Okay, so at this point, you should have your horizontal asymptote dashed in. You should have both vertical asymptotes dashed in, and you should have the origin plotted. Okay, that point zero, zero. The vertical asymptotes divides up your x-axis into three critical regions. You need to make sure you pick a few points in each of those regions. So we want a few points to a few x values. Remember, we get to pick x values and we generate y values. We pick a few x values to the left of x equals negative 3, smaller than negative 3. We pick a few values between negative 3 and positive 3. And then we pick a few values of x that are greater than positive 3. Now, you can make your um, table vertical like they have here. You can write it horizontally if you want to, whichever way you want to. But here you can see they pick the points negative 5 and negative 4 to the left of x equals negative 3. And then they pick the points negative 2, 0, 2 between negative 3 and 3, and then they pick 4 and 5 to the right of x equals positive 3. How did they get the y values? They got the y values by plugging in the x values into um, the equation. And so they got y values of 3.1, 4.6, and so on when they did that. So the, the, the last thing you do is you plot the points that you have and you draw in the smooth curves using the points and the asymptotes. So you would plug in, the, you would plot the point negative 5, 3.1, and then you would plot the point negative 4, 4.6, and then you would draw in a smooth curve that approaches the horizontal asymptote as you go to the far left, and that approaches the vertical asymptote in the direction indicated as you get close to it. 
All right, and then you move to the middle section and you plot the points. So we've got negative 2, negative 1.6, our 0, 0, which is already on there, and then 2, negative 1.6. That's enough information to tell us that the tangency here gives us what appears to be a downward opening parabola type figure. So you draw a nice little curve going through negative 2, negative 1.6, and then approaching that vertical asymptote as you go down. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now we're ready to get our third piece. Notice that we have three pieces this time. However many vertical asymptotes you have, you're going to have one more piece to your um, graph. Okay. So over here, we plot the 4, 4.6, the 5, 3.1, and then we draw in a nice curve that as it moves back toward that vertical asymptote, it goes up and gets closer and closer to it, and then it approaches the horizontal asymptote as you move to the far right. Last example. We are going to graph y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, I always stop and look and, and ask myself, is this bottom heavy, balanced, or um, top heavy? And honestly, I, I like to deal with the end behavior right away. So I go ahead and deal with it whenever I'm, I'm looking at this. Okay. Because when you're doing the end behavior, remember you look at the leftmost terms and you look and see how they divide out. Well, here we've got a top-heavy function. You've got a degree of 2 on top and a degree of 1 on bottom. And so we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote. Whenever it's top-heavy, that means you're going to have a slant asymptote. And we're going to see how to deal with that in just one minute. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can factor, and we can factor the top. So you can use the AC method. This one's pretty easy to do with trial and error. You do the X's. You need numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to 3, so plus 4 minus 1. And then on the bottom, you just have a nice little um, binomial um, there, x minus 2, so there's really nothing to factor there. All right, so now we're going to start our rate. R is for roots, and we start at the top. We set each factor equal to 0, so we get x plus 4 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0, and so we get roots at negative 4, 0, because when you solve x plus 4 equals 0, you get x equals negative 4, and when you solve x minus 1 equals 0, you get x equals 1. So you want to plot negative 4, 0, and 1, 0. If you want to go ahead and plot those on your graph, feel free to, and we'll look at those in just one minute. Now, asymptotes here means vertical asymptotes. We started at the top, now we go to the bottom. X minus 2 equals 0 gives us a vertical asymptote at X equals 2. Go ahead and dash that in. So you're going to have a nice little dashed vertical line at X equals 2. T is for 2, and it means two things. When you have a squared factor, not a squared term, but a squared factor, in the numerator you have tangency at the root. We don't have a squared um, factor in the numerator, so we don't have togetherness at the root. We don't have a squared factor in the denominator, so we don't have togetherness at the asymptote. I think I said togetherness in a minute ago. We don't have any tangency at the root. We don't have any tan uh, togetherness at the asymptote. E is for in behavior. So again, this is a top-heavy one, and this is going to be kind of an interesting case because you don't have a horizontal asymptote. So it's not just going to be y equals 0 or y equals some other number. You actually have to figure out what the slant asymptote will be. y equals x squared over x reduces to y equals x. Okay, So it doesn't reduce to just a number. Um, again, if when you reduce, you end up with any x's in the, that aren't in the denominator. Then again, this is just telling you you have a top-heavy function. To me, that's the easiest way to look at it and go, oh, this is top-heavy. So this means we will have a slant asymptote, which we will call an SA. We need to know what it is exactly. Determine the slant asymptote by dividing the denominator into the numerator and ignoring the remainder. In this case, and, and you can just do synthetic division, real easy to do. So I did synthetic division, and I got x plus 5 and then plus a remainder of 6, but we get to ignore that. And if you if you need a reminder about synthetic division, you've got videos for it, 
or we can talk about it when you first come to class or if you want to come in and get help with that between now and in class that would be great. If you're going to dash in the line y equals x plus 5 so it's going to have a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of 1 because the coefficient of x there is 1 it will guide you as you sketch in the end behavior. Okay, we need to find the y-intercept, so we're going to let x equal 0. And so everything on top zeroes out except for the negative 4. Everything on bottom zeroes out except for the negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. So plot the point 0, 2. Okay, so you should have the point 0, 2. You should have your 2... Um, roots on here. Now these are each little hash mark is two. We're, we're scaling by twos. So here's um, one zero and here is negative four zero. So those are your two roots. We've got our vertical asymptote at x equals two and here is our slant asymptote at approximately y equals, let me move it going to bug me. So let me just fix this just one second. Okay, that's better. That y-intercept wasn't quite right at 5. I think it's right about 5 now. And it has a slope of 1. And Here's our slant asymptote. That's important because it's going to help us guide where our curve should go. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. And remember, your vertical asymptote divides up your um, x-axis into critical regions. So we, since our vertical asymptote is at x equals 2, we want to pick some points to the left of 2. We want to pick some points to the right of 2. And so... Um, we went ahead and picked out several because this is kind of interesting. And so we picked out x equals negative 8, negative 4. We knew the 0, 2 thing, so that's good. And 1, 0, we knew that. And then we picked some to the right of 2, so 3, 4, 8, and 12. And again, the way that the y values are created is that simply you take the x values and you plug them in to your function. And you generate your y values. All right, so... We plot the ones to the left of 2. So here we've got negative 8, negative 3.6. We've got negative 4, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0. And then we draw on a curve that approaches the slant asymptote as we go to the left and approaches the vertical asymptote as we move closer and closer to it. It approaches it asymptotically. It gets extremely close to it. And then we plot the points that are to the right of x equals 2. And so we plot 314, 412, 814, and 12, 17.6. And we draw in a nice smooth little curve, one that as it approaches the vertical asymptote here from the right, it approaches it asymptotically, so it goes up, 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 up. And then as we go to the far right, we just continue to follow our slant asymptote. So it's really kind of cool how it, it serves as such a good guideline. Okay, guys, that's it. Go ahead and try your practice problems. If you don't feel like you understand this enough to do the practice problems, go ahead. The problems you try on your own, just those first couple, review the video or come in between now and when you have class um, and get enough help that you can at least get those first few problems done. Uh, have a good day, guys. I will see you all soon.